Hello, students. Welcome to our lab activity this week in our topic on wind and water energy. We're going to be modifying our lab activity a bit this week. And so uh, I would like you to open up to your lab page, but we're going to be changing some things as we go along. First, starting with the problem. The problem we're going to be addressing today is this. What are some variables to make the best pinwheel? What are some variables to make the best pinwheel? So first you might ask yourself the question, well, what is a pinwheel? Well, I have one here, and this is the kind of thing we're going to be making today. It is a uh, basically a windmill that we're going to construct on the end of a pencil. And when it moves through a moving air, wind, it will spin around and around and around. And our objective is going to be to have a little contest here today. And the contest that we're going to be having is to create a pinwheel that will spin more efficiently than any of your competitors, namely your classmates. So the basic problem is, how are you going to make the best pinwheel? Thinking about some of the variables that you might need to adjust along the way. So if you want to pause the video for a moment and write your hypothesis before I begin instructing you how we're going to do this, go for it. Hey, 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 we're back here in the lab. And now it's time for me to show you how we're going to make our pinwheel. And as I show you the steps of how to make the pinwheel, I have given you the materials to use so you can follow along. And of course, if you need to rewind, replay, pause the video at any time, feel free. So the materials you will need for today's activity include a single sheet of computer paper, a pair of scissors, a pencil with a rubber eraser, a glue stick, and a push pin. Here we go. First thing you need to do is to change this rectangular piece of paper into a square. And the best way to do that is to take one corner of your paper and you're going to fold it over to the opposite side. And I'll show you. Let me do it here first and then I'll show you in a very careful manner so that the top of the paper is brought completely over so it matches up with the opposite edge. If you do that correctly, you will be folding it diagonally. And when you fold it diagonally, there's going to be this little lip of excess. If you take that excess lip and fold it over, that will create a line that you're then going to use the scissors to cut off. Because by cutting off that little excess lip, you will have created a square. Let me show you. I've cut it off with scissors. There's my excess lip. <laughs> No, I can't talk. No, just kidding. So now we've got a perfect triangle. And if we open it up, we've got our perfect square. And our square is already folded diagonally in one direction. So once you've opened up your square, I'd like you now to fold your paper in the opposite manner in order to create a fold going the other way diagonally so that when you open up your paper, you will have two folds perpendicular to one another. 
If you hold the square like this, there are two diagonal folds. So far, so good. Now for the next part. You can take your pair of scissors and you're going to cut along each of the four folds, but only about halfway to the center. So don't cut all the way to the center, only cut about halfway to the center of your paper. So I'm going to make my four cuts right now, and then I'll show them to you. But you're just cutting along the folds, which are your guide. So here we have cut the paper. And you can see that I've only cut each of the folds about halfway. We're almost done, believe it or not. Now you're going to take your glue stick. Open up your glue stick. <laughs> Whew, that was pretty tight. Open up your glue stick and make sure it's not completely dried out like this one is. Oh, my. Hey, if your glue stick is completely dried out, toss it and get another glue stick from me. Hold on one moment. I've got more glue sticks that I can provide you. So let me take out another glue stick here. And hopefully this one won't. Be. Ah, this one is much better. So take out your glue stick and just smear it a little bit in the center of your square. Because now what you're going to do is this. You have four triangles on your square and half of each length of the triangle is cut. You can see that here. So if you hold the paper so that you're looking at the base of one triangle, take the left side of that base and bring it to the center and overlap it in the center just a little bit like this. So you are sticking the left side of the base of the triangle to the center of the paper. Rotate your paper counterclockwise and you're looking at the base of another triangle. Take the left side of that base, bring it to the center, overlap it a little bit on the glue, just like this. Rotate again, counterclockwise. You're looking at the base of another triangle. Take the left side of that triangle and Paste it to the center. And now we have one more base of the triangle to flip over. And if you do it correctly, and you might need another dab of glue, it's okay. And especially for this last one. Might need to add another little dab of glue there. Just a dab will do it. Put that left side of the base into the center. And this is what you will have created, a four-bladed pinwheel. Now, before it all flies apart on you, now take your push pin. Hopefully, you're doing this over your book. Your book can provide a cushion underneath because you're going to take that push pin and you're going to put it right into the center of your pinwheel. And if you do it over your book, the pin will go into the book, and that's okay to make a hole in your book. Just don't do it on a tabletop. The table might be too hard. But by pushing the pin through the pinwheel, this is what you should have created. And now holding on to the push pin part of your pinwheel, you're going to now take your pencil and push the pin into the end of your pencil eraser. And now you have a functioning pinwheel. And if you move it back and forth, you can see it starts to spin. Now, this is done with a single piece of paper. I've done it in just a few minutes, so it's a pretty easy thing to do. So once you've created your pinwheel, 
Then I want you to think about, well, what could you do? What variables could you change to manipulate this to make it a better pinwheel? One that is more efficient, one that spins with even a gentle breeze. Because let me tell you what the competition is going to be. Once you have completed your pinwheel, I have a special fan, as you will probably already see me setting up if you're in the classroom. Uh, I have a special fan that I am setting up while you're watching this video. And we're going to be using a very powerful fan across the entire room in order to test your pinwheel. The person who is able to have your pinwheel work from the greatest distance away from the fan will be declared the winner. So that being said, you know the competition, you know your materials, you know how to make your pinwheel, make your pinwheel, modify it, and let's see who will win the windmill competition for today. I wish you well and good luck. And until the competition, I'll say bye-bye.